we've seen an example involving different ways that we might select eight baseball cards and possibly arrange them, possibly not. One of the first things that we did in this range of scenarios was to simply select eight baseball cards and arrange them in a particular order on a shelf. And we determined that there were eight factorial ways to perform that task. If we wanted to compute eight factorial on our calculator, we would simply type eight, go to the math menu, select the probability submenu, and then scroll down to the factorial symbol and press enter. That leaves eight factorial on our input screen and selecting enter once more computes the 40,320 ways that this selection and arrangement of eight cards into eight positions could be performed. Now let's imagine that we had 20 cards to select from. This was another one of the scenarios in, in, in this baseball card example. Yet we were still going to select only eight from that group of 20 and then arrange them into a particular order on a display shelf. Well, this would be a permutation. And in order to compute it on the TI-84 plus calculator, we'd enter in 20, go to the math menu, select the probability submenu, and then choose NPR for permutation. And then the second input of NPR is going to be 8, the number of things that we were selecting from 20 in order to arrange. We hit enter, and it gives us our result of 5,079,110,400. Finally, if we wanted to perform the related combination, where we are simply selecting eight cards from the group of 20. We'd enter in 20, go once more to the math probability menu, and select NCR for combination. Then supply eight as the second input. Hit enter one last time, and we see that there are 125,000 970 ways to make that selection of eight cards from a group of 20. If we wanted to perform the same three computations outside of the calculator, perhaps in some mathematical software, such as MATLAB, which is pictured here, that would certainly be possible. We would just need to know the syntax to perform those ca calculations. So in MATLAB, if I wanted to compute the number of ways that you could arrange eight baseball cards in a definite order, we re recall that that just requires us to compute eight factorial. We'd need to know that MATLAB has a built-in factorial function. And so we would compute factorial of eight. And so when we execute that, we see that we get the usual 40,320 ways to select those eight baseball cards and then arrange them in a particular order. Likewise, if I wanted to compute the number of ways that we could select and arrange eight baseball cards from a group of 20 in a definite order, that's a permutation. MATLAB doesn't have a built-in permutation function, um, but it does have a built-in combination function in choose K. And since permutations are proportional to combinations by the factorial of the size of the group that you are selecting, we could just compute the combination and choose k of 20 comma 8 and multiply that by 8 factorial. So we've rearranged the permutation formula to express it in terms of a combination. We can see when we execute that, it gives us approximately 5.0791 times 10 to the 9, or a little over 5 billion. We see that we're getting the correct answer. And then finally, when we're computing the number of ways that we selected eight baseball cards from a group of 20, and then we're not arranging them at all in any particular way, um, 
that's just a combination. And MATLAB's built-in in choose K function is what performs combinations for us. So if we execute that, we see that we get the same answer as before, 125,970. It's certainly possible to use technological solutions such as the TI scientific calculators or MATLAB to compute probabilities that are more complex in their nature. A good example of probabilities that fit this description are the ones that occurred in our example um, of the group of candidates that applied for employment at a large social networking corporation. This was where they participated in a selection process where they were going to be placed in, into teams of 12 people who were all assigned different roles and then they were going to work together in order to solve complex software engineering problem. Of the 287 candidates, 126 completed a computer science degree, 83 attended a software engineering boot camp, and the remaining candidates learned their software engineering skills through self-study. We assumed that the selection committee was going to form its first team of 12 by randomly selecting candidates from the pool and assigning them to the roles within the team. We wanted to determine a whole range of different probabilities as a part of this, this example, but we're going to look at the second event um, right now that we studied in detail back when we first viewed this example. And we'll use both the TI calculator and MATLAB to solve it. Well, the event in question was the one in which half of the roles were fi filled by candidates who had computer science degrees, and the other half were filled by candidates who attended a software engineering boot camp in order to learn their software engineering skills. So we wanted to know the probability of forming such a team. We viewed this event as something that we could model as a sequence of three decisions and we computed the total number of ways we could form this team of 12 candidates with the aid of the multiplication rule. So our first decision was which six candidates with computer science degrees were we going to choose? And we found that with a combination, C of 126 comma 6. And then the second decision was which six candidates were going to be chosen that had gone to a software engineering boot camp. That was also computed with a combination, C of 800 or C of 83 comma 6. And then finally, our third decision was to determine the number of ways that we could arrange those 12 candidates to the 12 different roles on the team. And that was done with a, tw a factorial, 12 factorial to be specific. So we need to take those three quantities and compute them and multiply them together in order to determine the total number of ways to fill out this team. So finally, in order to compute the probability of forming this team in question, we'd need to take the quantity that we've just described computing, the number of preferred outcomes, and divide that by the total number of outcomes in our system. In other words, the total number of ways that we could select 12 candidates for the team and assign them to the different roles. And that was something, when we examined this, this example in detail, we computed using a permutation, P of 287,12. Well, in order to compute this probability on a TI calculator, we just need to take the formula we saw and translate it into language the calculator can understand using the factorial NCR and NPR functions. And the main thing we have to be careful of is to make proper use of parentheses so that we don't accidentally um, misgroup a, a calculation and maybe put it onto the numerator of a fraction rather than the denominator as we might intend. So here's what I mean. Our numerator consisted of two combinations and a factorial. And I'm going to group each of those separately into parentheses and multiply them together. So our numerator is going to look like two, two sets of opening parentheses. And inside the 
first set of parentheses is going to be the combination 126 choose 6. So that's 126 math probability in CR 6. Close parentheses. I'm going to multiply that by the next combination. 83 choose 6. So 83 math NCR 6. Close those parentheses. And I'm going to multiply that by a factorial, by 12 factorial. So 12 math probability factorial. Close parentheses. Now I'm going to close that entire group with a second set of parentheses because that formed my numerator. And I'm going to divide that by the permutation of p287, 12. So I'm going to use a division and then open up a new set of parentheses for the denominator and type in 287 math NPR, or math probability, NPR, 12. Close the parentheses. And that, if I execute it, gives me a probability of 0 0.003599, so on. Same value that we had seen in, in the example when we essentially computed it by hand. If we wanted to use mathematical software such as MATLAB to compute the same probability, it's certainly possible. We're looking at a live script that does just that in uh, the MATLAB environment right now. In fact, this live script uh, solves the complete example on uh, the software engineering job candidates that we looked at earlier. In order to deal with the particular scenario that we've been investigating with technology, where half of the roles are filled by candidates with a computer science degree and the other half are filled by candidates who attend a software engineering boot camp, um, we just need to remember that we need to use uh, the, the classical probability formula, R over N. We need to determine the number of preferred outcomes and determine the number of possible outcomes. Well, the possible outcomes in this scenario is just the number of ways that we can select 12 people from a group of 287 and arrange them to 12 different roles. And this, this live script computes that early on using the formula for a permutation. Because remember, MATLAB doesn't have a built-in um, doesn't have a built-in permutation function. So we compute this by forming the combination 287 choose 12 using MATLAB's in choose k function and multiplying it by 12 factorial. And MATLAB gives us a little warning here that just has to do with the fact that we're computing a very large number and that we might be running the risk of losing some accuracy. Um, it, it's going to turn out to be okay in this, this scenario, but we can see that there is a very large number of possibilities in this scenario. It's 2.47 times 10 to the 29 ways we can make this selection. So later on, we count the number of preferred outcomes by viewing, by viewing this process as a sequence of three decisions. Again, we're selecting six people with computer science degrees, first decision, six people who went to software engineering boot camp, second decision, and then we're taking those 12 candidates and arranging them among the 12 distinct roles, 12 factorial. So multiplication rule tells us to take those two combinations in a factorial and multiply them together, and that's what this line of input is just about to do, where we compute in choose k 126 comma 6, multiply it by in choose k 83 comma 6, and multiply that by factorial 12. And that gives us a value of 8.9 and change times 10 to the 26. So that's our number of preferred outcomes, or R. We've already stored both R and N now in MATLAB's memory. And so if we 
divide them are divided by n, we get the probability in question, and it's 0 0.0036, which is consistent with what we saw before.